In this video, we'll look at the Heathkit IP27 low voltage regulated power supply. Power supplies are a common piece of equipment on electronics benches being needed to power devices for testing, prototyping new circuits, and for operating devices that don't provide their own supply. Power supplies are mainly characterized by the voltage level that they output. Roughly speaking, they can be grouped into low voltage, about 30 volts and below, and high voltage above 30 volts. Vacuum tube circuits tend to require high voltages, anywhere from about 150 volts DC to 500 volts DC or more, while solid state circuits generally operate on low voltages, often 12 volts or 5 volts for digital circuits. Tubes also typically require either 6.3 or 12.6 volts AC to power the tube filaments. A second important characteristic is the maximum current that a supply can produce in amps or milliamps. Generally speaking, a greater current capacity implies a larger and more expensive power supply. A given output may be fixed in voltage or variable. A variable output provides more flexibility, while some voltages such as 5 volts and 12 volts are so commonly used that a fixed output supply for these is useful. As well as voltage, some variable supplies provide a facility for controlling the maximum output current. These are sometimes called constant current supplies when used in this mode. If a current control is not provided, there is usually some way of limiting the current drawn, either limiting it to a fixed maximum and or a fuse or circuit breaker. Supplies may provide meters, either analog or digital, to display the output voltage and or current. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. Heathkit offered many models of power supplies over the years, and typically had several models of low and high voltage power supplies at different feature and price points at any given time. The IP27 is a solid state regulated low voltage power supply it produces a variable output from 0.5 to 50 volts with adjustable current limiting up to 1.5 amps. It was produced from 1968 to 1975 and offered as a kit or factory assembled. The factory assembled version being the IPW27. My 1971 Heathkit catalog lists it at a price of $79.95 and the assembled IPW27 for $125. It was described there as the finest low voltage supply Heath has ever offered. A front panel meter shows output voltage or current depending on the position of the switch below it, with neon lamps indicating the mode. The coarse voltage switch selects the output voltage in one of 10 ranges that each cover a 5 volt range over the full range from 0.5 to 50 volts. The fine voltage control adjusts the output voltage continuously within the selected range. Similarly, output current limiting can be set in one of four ranges using the coarse current switch 50 milliamps, 150 milliamps, 500 milliamps, and 1.5 amps. The fine current control adjusts the output current continuously over the range. Red and black colors on the voltage and current range switch markings correspond to the meter scale to read for that range. A toggle switch selects DC on or reset standby. This allows you to set the unit for specific output voltage and current and then turn off the output, such as when connecting or disconnecting the supply to a circuit under test. The output is protected by current limiting as well as by a relay which protects it against overloads and shorts. The output is floating. There are plus and minus outputs as well as ground. Multiple units can be connected in series for more voltage or in parallel for more current. The IP27 is one of the pieces of test equipment described in my new book, Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment. The book covers Heathkit's test equipment starting with a brief history of Heathkit, an overview of the test equipment product lines, and tips on buying and restoring vintage test equipment from sources like eBay. Separate chapters cover the major categories of component testers and substitution boxes, frequency counters, meters, oscilloscopes, power supplies, signal generators, tube testers and checkers, and miscellaneous test equipment. Each chapter includes one or more in-depth sections that look at a representative model 
from my Heathkit collection covering its features, operation, and notable quirks or trivia. The appendix provides a list of references and resources including books, websites, and suppliers of parts, manuals, and related products and services, as well as a detailed product listing of every known model of test equipment produced by Heathkit. The book is available from lulu.com and retails for US $19.95. Let's take a look at the power supply operating. Suppose we want to apply 12 volts across a load, in this case a 39 ohm power resistor. We turn the unit on and turn the mode switch to DC on. We set the meter switch to voltage. We select a suitable voltage range for the desired voltage. In this case, the 10 to 15 volt range. Then we adjust the fine voltage control for the desired 12 volts on the meter. The current output is on the highest 1.5 amp range. Setting the meter switch to current, we can see the current flow is about 300 milliamps. If we wanted to limit the current to this value, we can set the coarse current control down to the 500 milliamp range. If we reduce the fine current adjust, we reach the point where the output current is limited to 300 milliamps. And going lower reduces the current on the meter. Now we're in constant current mode and the output voltage will change to maintain the current at the specified maximum level. Looking inside the chassis, you can see that all the wiring is point to point. It has a large power transformer and several large electrolytic filter capacitors. The design is all solid state, but no integrated circuits are used. The calibration procedure only requires a power resistor to use as a load, and in a pinch the manual says you can use an electric iron. It uses the built-in meter for adjustment. The unit seems to run quite cool even at full output current. I purchased this IP27 on eBay in 2013 from a seller who had several units. It appears to have been used by a marine electronics company for lab or manufacturing purposes. According to a sticker on the unit, it was last calibrated in 2008. I suspect it was in use there for many years. The unit as received was fully working. The outside of the case was a little worn, but it was clean inside. It did not come with a manual, but I found a full copy of the manual on the internet. It produced full output voltage and current, and running through the entire calibration procedure, I found it was bang on and did not need any adjustment. The front panel dial markings that were in red ink had faded, so I replaced them with labels made from a label printer. An internet search found that Heathkit recommended a modification to prevent possible transistor failure when the voltage switch has changed rapidly. My unit had not had the modification made, so I applied it. The power supply uses germanium transistors, which may be difficult to find replacements for. In summary, the IP27 was Heathkit's high-end low-voltage power supply, and undoubtedly many of them were sold over the eight years that the product was offered. Many of them, like mine, were probably in daily use for decades. Having different voltage and current ranges is a nice touch. Lower quality supplies tend to use one range for output adjustment, which made it hard to adjust accurately. In 1975, the IP27 was superseded by the IP2700 series of power supplies, which offered analog or digital meters and models having four different maximum output voltages. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage amateur radio and test equipment.